I'll repeat the question the best I, at my ability. So uh, Cam wanted to know about the current number of doses that we've done, uh, the gap between the doses that have been distributed, um, and then how, what does this mean for working towards 25,000 doses a day? Is that about? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so currently, you know, today's data shows that we're right at about 400,000 doses administered out of a total of 960,000 doses distributed. Now, the distributions come at the beginning of the week, so they're shipped generally on Tuesdays. And so there's a certain amount of vaccine that is just going to be the Delta, right? So this week, uh, it was 105,000 first doses and 61,000 second doses. So that's a, well, 166,000 doses that will get administered at events like this across the Commonwealth over the course of the week. And so we'll see those numbers come in. So you take that 160, 166,000 out. Um, another big chunk of that vaccine has been earmarked for the Federal Pharmacy Partnership. So the federal government's strategy to uh, prioritize the vaccination of uh, all residents and staff of long-term care facilities. So uh, nursing homes, uh, long, uh, assisted living facilities, group homes, independent living, uh, was to contract CVS and Walgreens. And so of uh, the doses that we are getting, about 226,000 of those are earmarked for CVS and Walgreens. Uh, they are working through those facilities. Many of the skilled nursing facilities have either already been completed or will be completed by the end of January. Uh, they are working to staff up. Uh, I, I had a conversation with their state leadership this week. I know uh, other leaders in our state government also did. And so we're really uh, trying to figure out what do we need to do to come alongside CVS and Walgreens to get through that population more quickly. They've got the vaccine, but there are challenges with that population, right? So many of our uh, long-term care facilities are actually experiencing active COVID outbreaks, which means we've got to put off those vaccination events uh, by a couple weeks or until things settle down in those communities. And so that's going to stretch out our timeline a bit, uh, but then we're also starting to look at how do we, uh, uh, you know, partner with other local pharmacies that already have relationships with these facilities and potentially reallocate. So that's another chunk of the vaccine, which is how do we, uh, how do we get through that 1A most important population as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and then there's another sec uh, uh, chunk of the doses that uh, have been distributed and for various reasons, they're either uh, in the process of being redistributed to other facilities. Um, some of them, I think there were certain people who received the vaccine, uh, certain entities that were unsure about the coming of the second doses. And so they're holding those vaccine and have them scheduled for their staff second doses now. So, and then there's about 90,000 that are actually, have already been administered. Uh, but there's a data gap. Either we need to do manual entry in those cases or um, ensure that the systems, the, the registration systems that those patients were registered on and that the vaccine was given to uh, has, a, has an appropriate link to our state database, which is where we pull out all of the data. Uh, so those are the main categories for where those doses stand now. Uh, my job is to really close that gap and make sure that we get the data quality right uh, so that we have a much more accurate picture for Virginians about how vaccination is going here in the state. Good afternoon. Yes. So the last question, how many long-term residents have been vaccinated? Um, our data on the website is showing, I think, 34,000 today. There's always a little bit of a lag. Yesterday, CVS and Walgreens were reporting 56,000 of those long-term care facility staff and residents have been vaccinated. And so that accounts for some of the gap, right? 50, 56,000 vaccinated, uh, yet 226 total vaccines um, committed to that group. So that's a big part of where the accounting is. It's a big part of where our doses are. 
Um, as I said, 90,000 are have been administered and need to be ported over, or you know, the data quality just needs to be addressed so that those can be added. I expect that to happen over the next 48 to 72 hours. Um, and then, yeah, we, we have a, a pretty clear read on where the vaccine has been distributed. We know where it's been sent over the course of the last month. Um, you know, a, a big chunk of that has gone to some of the larger hospitals and healthcare systems. A big chunk has gone to local health departments. And then uh, small amounts have gone to different uh, private providers and pharmacies. Uh, and so we have good accounting on all of that. We know how many have been distributed. We know how many have been uh, administered minus some of the lag. And so we're waiting for some of that to come in. Uh, but I, I don't have any concerns that vaccine has been lost or misplaced. I mean, we really do have a, a good sense of, uh, of where most of it is and what we need to do to get it off the shelves now. Yeah, the question is, have we been in communication with the Biden administration? And yes, we have. Uh, prior to the inauguration uh, yesterday, I talked to the head of the uh, vaccination program, the COVID-19 uh, 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 group that he had put together. Uh, they have hit the ground running. Uh, it is uh, reassuring to know that we have a new partner uh, in Richmond, I mean, excuse me, in Washington, that, and we look forward to to working uh, with the Biden administration. And, you know, one of the other things that uh, Danny and I might have touched on a little bit about, but, you know, as we move forward, there's gonna be a supply issue. And so we need to make sure that as we open up more sites like this one right here and, and expand who's eligible to come in for their vaccinations, we need to make sure that we have the doses uh, in Virginia. So the Defense Production Act, uh, which uh, President Biden has declared he's put into effect to help increase the number of doses that are being manufactured in the country will also be helpful as we move forward because Dr. Avula can explain the numbers a little bit better than I can, but in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a supply issue where we've got people ready to get the vaccination, but not enough doses. But working with Washington, we expect to, uh, to remedy that as soon as we can. Uh, the question is about Hampton Roads. Uh, right now, the, the dashboard on the state website is showing that most of Hampton Roads is in 1B, yet you're hearing on the ground from officials that, that health departments aren't doing 1B yet. Um, I've been in contact regularly with those local health directors. It seems like by the end of the week, pretty much all of Hampton Roads will be in 1B. And so what does that mean? It means that uh, as new vaccine comes in, there will be vaccination events to support that will broaden from just the healthcare worker and the long-term care facility population. So uh, as they announce 1B now, they are now planning for events next week that will start to broaden out to some of those 65 and older individuals with underlying health conditions, and then uh, working through the closed pods like this is today, where we're really focused on uh, essential personnel, police, fire, teachers, childcare workers. So uh, districts across the state will use that strategy. Now, vaccine supply is a really significant issue. This week, uh, this past week, we had uh, over about 300,000 doses, al almost 300,000 dose requests by physicians, offices, pharmacies, uh, healthcare provider, health systems, um, but only 105,000 doses to dole out. And so uh, what we are doing moving forward is just doing a geographical distribution based on population. Uh, so what we know, we're, we're told as of last night, it's about 105,000 for this upcoming week. Uh, and so we will just split that based on population density across the Commonwealth. Uh, and then each district will get their share. Uh, and then the district has to determine uh, what are the channels that vaccine is going to come through? How much is going to happen through mass events like this? Uh, how much are we going to rely on pharmacies or private providers? And how much are we going to rely on the health systems for? And so each district has a slightly different strategy based on uh, you know, the, the players in that community and who, who has the capacity to do what. Uh, but I, I'm uh, certain that next week you will start to see 1B populations start to get vaccinated in Hampton Roads. Why there would be a lag, but it does 
doesn't explain why Virginia would lag other states. Are these problems worse in Virginia than they are in other states? You're popular today, Dan. <laughs> Uh, the question was, I, uh, my explanation of the lag explains why there would be a lag, but relative to other states, are we, are we seeing unique reasons for that particular lag? Uh, Greg, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I think that most, many places that are using um, some of the platforms we're using may have that, uh, that data connection issue, uh, but I, th I think that there are also, uh, you know, one of the realities of, of some of the more rural parts of our state uh, is that people, in, instead of trying to kind of onboard this new software and try to figure out how to do a mass vaccination event in a place that may not have internet connectivity, is that they just went to, uh, to paper registration. And so there are a few places that account for several thousand doses where they have done paper registration but haven't uh, come back behind them to do the manual entry. So what we did this week is we assembled a, a, a team of 10 individuals who are trained in the state database and Viz and have access to Viz entry. In fact, we just sent uh, a, a couple of those folks over to a health department today to get them caught up. And we, so we've, we've developed a, a manual solution to get some of those health departments caught up. Um, we are still troubleshooting some of the, the data uh, transport issues, but I don't, I don't know how that compares to other states. Yeah, the question is, the supply issue is one barrier to getting people vaccinated. What are the other barriers? Um, so I would say for the last week and a half, it was a lack of clarity for people who received the vaccine about what was gonna happen with second doses, right? So um, if you are a, a large employer and you receive a thousand, uh, or you're a large private practice, you receive a, uh, a thousand doses, um, you, Vaccinate all your staff and you're not certain whether you're going to get a second dose allocation. Now the federal government has told us that they will provide a second dose shipment directly for every provider that receives a first dose on a schedule. So um, let's say you're a, uh, you know, a large family practice here in Richmond. Um, if you get a thousand doses of Moderna vaccine, four weeks later you will get a thousand second doses of Moderna vaccine. I think with a lot of the mixed messaging we were hearing from the federal government, were they gonna liquidate those second doses? Um, are we sure that production is up? There's been some hesitation on the part of people who received vaccine, and so they've, they've held on to some of that vaccine to make sure that their uh, employees and staff would have a second dose. Uh, now, what we have really made clear is that uh, what we've seen over the last two weeks is that the federal government has followed through on that. We have received second doses for everybody who has received them. Uh, we, we hear uh, the, the communication from the federal government that they, uh, they trust the production that's happening. They, they trust that these second doses will continue to be made available. Um, and so we're really trying to uh, ensure that every provider has confidence in that and goes ahead and uses all of their first doses with the assuredness that those second doses will come. Um, Sabrina, the, the question was, um, sorry, <laughs> I lost it. Yeah, thanks. Will closing the data gap move us from being, uh, you know, towards the bottom to, to somewhere else? And the answer is obviously yes. You know, when we think about the 90,000 doses that have been administered but haven't been uh, registered yet, I think e even just that alone would, would put us more into the middle of the pack. Um, and then I think that the other thing that we're seeing is that the infrastructure for vaccination across the board has been built, right? We have way more requests for doses, and I have no doubt that the 110, 105,000 new doses that come in and whatever second doses come in uh, will be able to use expeditiously through the infrastructure that's here. 
Now, you know, at some point, as we progress through uh, these essential workers, we are going to have a different challenge, and that's that, um, you know, we want to get to somewhere around 70 to 80 percent of our population being immunized to get to that level of herd immunity, to stop transmission in our community. Um, we know that in certain segments of our community, there aren't 70 to 80 percent of the people who want the vaccine. And so simultaneously, we have uh, efforts like our community ambassador work, uh, like the community forums we've held with the African-American community, um, and, and really trying to understand uh, what, what are the reasons for vaccine hesitancy and how do we break through those? How do we make sure that people understand the clinical trials that have taken place, the safety and effectiveness profiles um, that they, uh, and, and start to trust that information. And we, uh, I'll say that we've even seen Seen that with healthcare workers, right? Uh, we thought that we would have much higher uptake with healthcare workers than we did. Really, around 50 to 60 percent of healthcare workers ended up getting the vaccine. Now, the encouraging news is that after some of the wait and see folks saw their colleagues go ahead and get vaccinated and nothing bad happened to them and now they're moving towards their second doses and getting fully protected, those wait and seers are saying, okay, I'm ready now. I'm gonna get vaccinated as well. And so I think we'll see that kind of roll out in waves in different groups of our population. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I'm encouraged that we really can get to 70 to 80% of our population immunized uh, by the midsummer and, and really put all of this behind us. Again, thank you all for being here. Again, thanks to the Raceway here, uh, Dennis B Bickmeyer, to, uh, for his efforts, to the mayor, to Delegate Bagby, thank you for, for being here, and, and our local uh, officials. Appreciate everybody. This is a team effort. And I, just to reiterate what uh, Dr. Avula said, and I, I, I apologize, I made you lose your train of thought by uh, tapping on the shoulder, but you know, the way we're going to get this pandemic behind us is to get as many Virginians vaccinated as we can. And, and to his point, when we go out to certain sites uh, and only 35, 40, sometimes 50 percent of the individuals uh, are willing to take the vaccination, we need to do better. And so we're working with our community leaders, working with our faith leaders to, to really assure Virginians that, uh, that this vaccination is safe, it's effective. And again, if we can get the herd immunity, which is 75, 80 percent up in that ballpark, then we'll be able to put this pandemic behind us. So thanks for being with us today. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do, but uh, we're working on it every day and uh, want to make sure that we can get all Virginians vaccinated. So thank you all.